It's learning time. Welcome to Comic Book Corner. I'm Ben Delatore. Uh, before we begin uh, the segment, a huge shout out to a good friend of mine, Phil Cowan. Phil Cowan was a legendary broadcaster in the Sacramento area, over 40 years of radio and television. He just retired. And I mentioned him for two reasons. One, at the last week of his show, he did, um, excuse me, Bob, um, he did profile our show very much. And I really appreciate it and brought a number of new subscribers to the show. Phil, enjoy your retirement. And we probably will have Phil on at some point because he's just now getting into the comic book world. So, uh, Phil, congratulations and thank you again. So, Phil, thank you again. Welcome to the new listeners, by the way. We've had a number of subscribers thanks to Phil Cowan. So uh, we will have him in the show in short order. I want to follow up on a breaking news story that we, we did last week. And, yes, there are breaking news stories in comic books. You want to do, if you see something like any newscaster or broadcaster or journalist, you want to be the first to be out there. I had reported on a suspicion uh, as a longtime comic collector, the ongoing Moon Knight series, which is quite good, by the way. The suspicion is this. Um, At the end of Moon Knight's uh, six-issue series, this person will appear, Rama Tut. And Rama Tut is a variation of Kang the Conqueror, played brilliantly by Jonathan Major at the end, at the last episode of the Loki show. The theory goes like this Rama Tut is an Egyptian character, and Moon Knight's power is Egyptian in origin. And here's my, my perspective not just the pieces fit together regarding the storyline, but think about uh, Disney and Marvel Comics, they and the MCU, they are companies, and they want as many sales as possible. If the theory is, is correct, Ramatat shows up as a variation of Kang on May 4th, which is a Wednesday, the final show of the, of the Moon Knight series. Two days later, the Doctor Strange uh, movie uh, uh, debuts. Now, they're projecting, let's say, 400,000 or 400 million people seeing, or who, who knows, whatever the number is. They'll increase that by at least 20%, because remember what we did after the end of uh, episode six of Loki? We were talking about Kang. It was all Kang all the time. That's that's a joke, by the way. Um, but we talked about it all the time because it was such a wild, absolutely incredible storyline that went in several different directions. We could be talking about Rama Tut in the same way, leading into the Doctor Strange movie, which is based a lot on what happened in episode six of the Loki show. So that if you missed the uh, the breaking news story, check out con- the Dan's Comic Book Corner issued about a week ago. Moving on, um, I want to profile... Uh, the another upcoming movie, The Armor Wars, which is due out, I think, in 2023, if not early 2024. And there are some books that you should probably get hold of now, because as these fine gentlemen were profiling books now, the timing is, is um, you want to get these things before people start talking about some of these comics. So I've put together a little list of comics you might want to look at and a profile as to why. Let's start with the first one here. Iron Man 120. Played by, um, well, this is the first appearance of uh, Justin Hammer, played here by Sam Rockwell. I profile Sam Rockwell for this reason. Justin Hammer from the comic books was a very, very a strong, hard-nosed character. The Sam Rockwell character is a little too comedic for me, and I don't think he, he takes the role very seriously. No offense to the actor, he might be able to change his, his direction, and I think he should if he's going to be profiled in in this movie now marvel is seemingly very loyal with all of their their actors and actresses they may keep sam rockwell but i hope they step up he steps up his game because again the the justin hammer character is a more aggressive character not what we've seen in the the iron man um um, movies of of late now this would be the first one here because again justin hammer was a rival of stark industries this book is still very reasonable in its raw state in these uh, graded copies, they're a little more expensive. Next one up here is Iron Man 200, um, and I, we could have put Iron Man 170, but I've been pro- I've been pushing that book for the longest time. That was the first appearance of James Rhodes as he took on the Iron Man armor, and I still say that James Rhodes is the more logical choice to take on the Iron Man role. He knows the armor, he knows Stark, he knows Stark technology. Riri Williams, if they follow through with that, is a much younger character completely inexperienced but it's the decision of the mcu suits 
they may do both. That would be my logical choice. But Iron Man 170 is another comic to, to um, keep an eye on. But with Iron Man 200, uh, this is one of those books that I'm surprised didn't go anywhere after the first Iron Man in 2008 because this is Iron Man versus Iron Monger. Now, this was uh, um, Obadiah Stane uh, uh, donning that armor for the first time. And he, like in the movie, is killed at the end of, of this episode. Now, I bring this issue up for this reason. Stane was, a, like Justin Hammer, a very smart man, very aggressive, and he had full control of Stark Enterprises. If the Armor Wars takes off, who knows what Stane did with that technology? I don't think he sat on it and did nothing with it. That could be a, a whole variety of possibilities that the MCU could use to unlock whatever Stane happened to do while he had control of Stark Enterprises, and I believe that would start here in Iron Man 200. Now, The Armor Wars, I believe, starts in Iron Man 225, and it was a long-lasting series all the way until, I think, 235, and it spilled over to a few other series. These are all very, very reasonable in their raw state. Even in the slab copies, they're still reasonable. Armor Wars, I think, is going to be a very, very serious movie. Sort of like with the, um, um, the upcoming Doctor Strange movie, it's going to lead into several different directions. But now is the time to get your hands on these issues because, again, this could lead into several different areas. But if you really want to get your hands on some really nice issues here, let's go to some Silver Age goodness. Starting with the old Strange Tales, uh, this is Strange Tales uh, 46 and 59. The, uh, pardon me, 69. This is the first appearance of Crimson Dynamo and the Titanium Man. Now, these are great old reads back in the day when Iron Man was, was the Golden Avenger. As you can see, I'm still wearing the Golden Armor in issue 46. And these, this is one of those you can't go wrong. If these two characters don't show up in the upcoming movie, at least you have great gold, uh, Silver Age keys. And the Silver Age market, I keep hammering on the Silver Age market because they're a steady, steady up tick they don't go down they don't uh jump up and down wildly like some of the modern comics and these i looked on the for the raw copy sales just recently on ebay they're quite reasonable for as old as they are for good mid-grade copies which i would get a good mid mid-grade copy hope you get a good one and get that slab but these are great reads and i get your hands on them because again once the armor wars takes off i think uh, this will be these will be not unattainable, but they may double, maybe even triple in price because if they're roughly $100 for a mid-grade, I can see these going for two or $300 depending on the character and how they interact with the, with the upcoming story. You never know with the MCU. Other books to look out for, one you probably wouldn't expect, is um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, issue number eight. This is the first appearance of Machine Man. Machine Man was a Jack Kirby story. And I've said this before, if... I was working for the MCU. I'd look through all the, the Jack Kirby stories um, when he worked um, before he went for to DC, obviously, when he worked with Stan Lee. But he did a lot of stuff on his own. And this is a very underrated character. The Machine Man, um, he had a, a number of incarnations, but it starts right here. This is a great book, a great read. There are a few issues afterwards that I would also get your hands on, but it, it starts here. You can get a good, decent copy for maybe 100 $150 or so if, if you look hard enough. It, the one thing, because of the yellow copy, this is very, very challenging to get a 9.8. I have a 9.6 of this, and I've, I've never seen a 9.8, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that would be very, very expensive. But even though he was not technically part of Stark Enterprises regarding the armor wars and technology, you never know with the MCU. They may bring him in just, just because, because he is an interesting character, and he was a Jack Kirby creation, and Jack Kirby, like Stan Lee, knew what he was doing. The book to the right is one of my all-time favorites. That is X-Men 31. That is the first appearance of the Cobalt Man. Along with Jack Kirby, you should also look at Roy Thomas stories. Roy Thomas, who was the first editor-in-chief named and picked by hand by Stan Lee when he went to Los Angeles to promote Marvel Comics. Stan, uh, Roy Thomas was, was very much uh, along the lines of Stan Lee regarding his writing, understood the Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Marvel bullpen method. And um, when he created this character, he did it in true Marvel style. Stan Lee, who had this, uh, uh, the rumor goes, that he had a, a tough time remembering certain names. So he would use this, uh, a character with the same letter of the first and last name, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, uh, Peter Parker, that sort of thing. This is Ralph Roberts. Uh, Roberts sees that the Stark technology comes up with his own Iron Man type book 
And um, this this was a one shot though. It didn't really go anywhere, sadly, because the X Men series didn't go anywhere. And as I brought up in the last episode, it was revived by Chris Claremont. But this is also a reasonably priced book. You can't go wrong by having this. Um, it was a fantastic read. The problem with this particular character was, as I mentioned before, with James Rhodes when he first donned on the armor of Iron Man in, uh, in issue 170, he had issues with, uh, with uh, not radiation, but the, the suit was designed for Tony Stark's brainwaves. Um, Ralph Roberts didn't anticipate the cobalt radiation, which affected his mind, and sort of he went crazy and tried to destroy the X-Men. Not probably not a good thing, but this is a one shot here that that he was only his, his only Silver Age appearance. But Roy Thomas loved this story just like I did, and he tried to revive him back in these two issues: Incredible Hulk one seventy three and one seventy four. This is the I consider the last of the Silver Age. Again, I'm one of those few people that is pushing the twenty cent era was the end of the Silver Age, and it well, began yeah. in the twenty five cent era. Now, the 173 is his first modern appearance in this era, and he bulks up, changes himself physically. He is In X-Men 131, he was a, he's simply a, a, a knockoff of Iron Man. In this issue, he's a, a cross between Iron Man, the Hulk, because he bulks up with cobalt radiation, and that suit is predates the uh, Hulkbuster armor by several decades. And he is definitely a match for, for Bruce Banner and, and the Hulk. It's a great read. And in 174... That is, he's uh, flying over, um, he's in Australia, he's in Sydney. Love that cover. Another difficult one to get in high grade because of the black cover. Uh, but this is Roy Thomas at his best. Um, the story doesn't end here. I, I won't spoil it for you if you've never read these two stories here. But if the Cobalt Man does become part of the MCU, this is the time to get your hands on, on these issues. And again, you can't go wrong because these are great reads. Everyone, um, next episode of Comic Book Corner, we're going to continue on this theme of profiling movies as they as they move forward. The next show will be Thor, Love and Thunder. There's a bunch of things that to, to talk about, and I'll have that ready in about two weeks. And these good people in on Ian's uh, panel have touched on some of those already, but I won't spoil it for you. Well, maybe I will. I'll say one right now. Hercules. You might well look into the first appearance of Hercules while you still can. Everyone, I'm Dan Delatore. That's Comic Book Corner for this week, and I'll see you again next time.